Hey everyone, it's Allison Heikila. Thank you so much for joining me today. Two Mondays ago, I made this mono print, and I had a viewer named Norma ask me what I wound up doing with it. And I said, well, nothing yet, but maybe I'll make a video and we can make it together. So that's what I decided to do. I really love how this print came out. I used the houndstooth print, uh, excuse me, the houndstooth stencil from A Colorful Life Designs and some cardboard down at the bottom. I really think it came out super cool. I love that a lot of the red got picked up as I was braring, um, but then there's still plenty of red in here. I just, I think it's cool. So I was excited that somebody asked me about it because I had been wanting to work on it anyway. So we're gonna start with that. I have my little cheapo cardboard frame that I use to kind of isolate different areas of a piece when I'm trying to figure out what spot I wanna cut something down. So prior to starting the film here, or starting to, yeah, starting to film, <laughs> get with it, Al, um, I kind of figured that this was where I wanted to be. I'm gonna kind of tuck this over here just so that I get a nice amount of red, but then we have white, and I think that that's gonna be the way that we're gonna go with this piece. So I'm going to just mark this off. So this interior piece is four by five and a quarter. So this is the size that I typically make for my focal layer on a card. Um, and I just made it out of cardboard. So I'm going to just mark this off here and here so that I kind of know where I need to slice it. I'm gonna grab my cutting board and then we'll chop this down to the right size. Hopefully this will be fairly straight. The print is off by a little bit, but I don't think it matters that much. And we'll have a nice strip that we can use for something else at another time. I think that that's really cool all on its own. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm gonna bring this over to four. Yep, see, perfect. Off by just a hair, that's fine. So removing that white. I'm gonna chop this part off here at the bottom and then we'll bring that to five and a quarter. And then we have another strip that we can use another time as well, which is great. Okay, so this is my card base, uh, my focal layer for my piece. Not my card base, this is my card base. And you can see that this fits perfectly and we'll be able to put some color around the edge um, like I usually do. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this? There's a lot going on already. I don't wanna cover it up too much, but I thought it would be nice to have a nice, bold Merry Christmas on here. So I have this old sentiment stamp from Stampendous. It is uh, foam on rubber and it's got this plastic layer here, but if you pull it off, it pulls off the word, so I'm not gonna do that. It's meant to be on here. It's supposed to help attach to your acrylic block or your Misty or whatever platform you, you have at home. Um, sometimes I don't even put it on a Misty or anything. Sometimes I just use my fingers, but the plastic is supposed to be there. Use whatever sentiment you've got. I've got this glorious, this is my favorite red cardstock ever. I have been holding on to it for as long as possible, but I think that this is the right red for today. Um, it's from Prism. Does anybody remember Prism cardstock? It was my favorite brand back when I had my scrapbooking store. And this is my favorite red that they had. It's got like a really beautiful texture to it. Super faint, but um, so like it's hard to see on camera, but in person it's just delightful. So I use my anti-static powder tool on here and I'm going to just, again, use my fingers to place this. I'm not gonna put it on a block. I find that it's a little tricky with the plastic. It doesn't always stick very well and then it winds up dropping and then it ruins the whole thing. And like I said, I've been hoarding this piece of cardstock for a long time. I really don't want to waste any of it. I've got more, but not a whole lot. So I'm using some Versamark ink on my stamp. Again, this is a rubber stamp, so it's a really nice quality. And I'm gonna put this on here. I'm leaving a border around the edge and you'll see why. And now I'm gonna just push this down, just as if there was a block on here. What's nice about rubber is that the 
the imagery doesn't splay out the way a clear stamp sometimes does if you push too hard. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. If you didn't want to do it that way, you could certainly use a stamping tool. Um, I just opted not to. I'm grabbing a piece of paper here because we're going to use white embossing powder to heat this up and make our sentiment really stand out. Got a little bit of something going on right here. We're gonna get rid of that. Just using my pokey tool. Just get rid of those little pieces that are extra. Gotta fix that C a little bit. There we go. And then if you have any extra around the edges, you can also use a brush. Just like that. Okay. Let's clean up this powder before I blow it all over the place with my heat tool. This is just a detail white embossing powder from Stampendous. You can use whatever brand you've got. And now I'm gonna turn on my heat tool so you're gonna hear that. We're gonna let it get nice and hot. And then once it's nice and hot, we're gonna bring it over to the cardstock and melt this powder. You can see how it starts to change color and it'll get shiny. There we go. You can see some open areas here where the powder didn't kind of sink into. That's just because of the texture. I think that you can see that texture of the cardstock a little bit there. It's really lovely. Okay, so there's no dye for this. So what do we do? Sorry, I just dropped stuff. <laughs> what do we do? Well, I have this card that I've made in the past with this very same sentiment. And I just did a loose fussy cut around it. You can, if you want to, use the actual stamp itself and kind of draw a line with a pencil. But because this is on this plastic, it's a little trickier to do. You can kind of wedge a pencil in there. But we're going to just kind of fly by the seat of our pants and go around it. But isn't that a pretty sentiment when you give it like a shadow layer without it actually being a shadow layer? So if you have any um, stamps at home that may not have a shadow and you want that shadow, just give it a loose fussy cut. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to measure anything. Just kind of follow the design. And you don't have to go into every nook and cranny because if you think about a shadow die, a lot of times it leaves like portions, like this would probably be left in there, depending on the die. But we're gonna leave it because I don't wanna get quite so fussy with it. If I feel like it's hiding too much of that background that we made during that Model Print Monday, then perhaps I will, but at the moment, I'm not really planning on doing that. So, as I'm filming this, I'm saying to myself, my gosh, I have so much left to do before the holidays actually start happening. Um, Hanukkah has started, but Christmas is not here yet, and I have so much to do. There are other uh, holidays happening. I forget the amount, but there's a lot of holidays that happen at this time of year, which is why I like to always say happy holidays to people, but... There are, of course, many people that celebrate Christmas, and I do love this particular um, sentiment, the way it's kind of hand-lettered like this. I'm just going to get this piece off, and it'll make it a little easier to cut everything out. I'm going to go back in here a little bit and just kind of trim this down a bit more. Um, but I'm realizing that I haven't sent out a single holiday card yet. It's just been too crazy. There's been too much happening. Um, and I haven't gotten, a, gotten around to it yet. Hopefully soon. When I'm filming this, I think today's the 12th. Maybe it's the 13th. But either way, no, it's the 13th. Oh, I've lost a day. Um, I'll get them out. It just might be a little later. I used to mail them out on Black Friday. That tradition has long ceased. <laughs> there we go. I like it. Do I want to cut this out? 
if I cut this out, do I have to cut that out? No, probably not. But you know what? I think I'm going to lose this piece. See, when I said it, it's like, oh, you know you're going to wind up removing it. I didn't do that on this other card that I showed you earlier. But we're going to do it this time. So you can get as crazy as you want. If you have um, like an X-Acto knife or something, you could even get in between all of these areas. But I am absolutely not doing that today. I am just not... I'm not going to go that crazy. It would look great, but we're not there today. We need to do just as much as we can and not overdo it. I think that looks so cool as is, right? Look at that. It's popping. I love the white embossing on top of the red cardstock. I think it's really cool. I love that it's not perfect embossing because of the texture on that cardstock. It just adds to the grunge factor of it. But you know, guys, we absolutely need to add some color to that background. Don't you think? Or should we leave it white? You know what we need? Sequins. I'm going to grab some sequins. All right, I've got some sequins. If you were a fan of Doodle's Playbook, doodles paper playground unfortunately they're no longer in business um you might have the snow pals sparkle blend that's what i'm going to use here it's got some silvers which i don't think i'm going to use but there's some reds and plenty of different whites i think that that's going to be perfect however i think what i need to do first is get this merry christmas adhered to this layer this was just done on copy paper a nice quality copy paper but copy paper nonetheless and if you want to add some bulk to it you can certainly adhere it to some cardstock um, prior to, you know, finishing the card off, but I don't really feel like it's necessary. I'm not going to be doing anything to it too crazy. Um, so I don't, I don't feel like it's necessary, but you can, if you want to, let's put this here. How's that looking? I think that's pretty good. All right. It's got a bit of a curl to it, but again, that's because it's just copy paper. But once we get it onto our base, it'll be fine. And I gotta be honest, the more I'm looking at this, the more I wanna leave this white, which is just bananas to me. Originally, I was gonna pop on one of these with a brush. These are firework sprays. They have like a mica powder in the bottom. You shake them up and you could spray them, but I usually brush them on. But, oh, you know what I could do? Oh, I've got an idea. I've got these uh, Lindy's Magicals, but these are the Glitzies and there's no color in them. If you've played with Magicals before, you know that there's a lot of pigment to them. These have a clear base, but lots of sparkle. So what if we used the snazzy sparkle around the edge? Let me hold this up to, to the camera so you could see. Look at how pretty that is. I think we're going to do that. We could even use a uh, sheer shimmer spritz and sparkle. But I think I want to use this because I haven't really gotten to play with this much. Look at how pretty that is. It's going to look even better once it's wet. That's what we're going to do instead of adding the red. And then we will um, get on our sequence. And the card is kind of done. I mean, this is a fast one. Okay, so I've got my water over here. Ignore the blue. I was playing with blue paint. Um, let me grab a brush. Just got a big fat brush here. And what I like to do when I'm using the Magicals is I grab my little pokey tool, which has like a little spatula on the end, and I kind of just scoop some out. You really don't need a lot. In fact, I know that I'm putting too much, <laughs> so I'm going to put some of this back. Scoop some out right onto my glass mat, and then I'm going to dip my brush into my water. Let's see if I can get this on screen. And... I'm going to just apply this around the edge. A little bit more water. Can you see that sparkle? It, it just looks wet right now, but there is a sparkle there. I'm gonna probably need a little bit more of this stuff, but I don't like putting too much out because I don't wanna waste it. But since we're going around the whole border, we're gonna need some more. Okay, that should be good. That's really pretty. I hope that it comes up good on camera once it's dried um, because it's really a nice sparkle. And the blue paint water doesn't matter. It's not going to alter the way this looks. It will be fine. 
Okay. Just a nice quick look at that. That is really pretty. I'm trying to get it to focus. There we go. That's lovely. Okay, let me clean this up and then we'll move on. Okay, this is totally dry now. Let's see if we can focus. There we go. Look at that sparkle. That's so pretty. Okay, now we're going to get our focal layer on here. I can't find my glue. Here it is. <laughs> and then we'll add some sequins and we'll be done. All right, using some Barely Arts glue. And I'm gonna try to get this as centered as possible. That's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. It's a little crooked. Not too bad. We can deal with it. I think it's fine. Okay. Sequence. I've got my pokey tool. I've got my Barely Arts glue. I've got my jewel picker here. And I'm going to just try to figure out where I want to put these sequins. And I'm going to try to do it quickly because, well, it's not the most exciting thing to watch. And if it's taking too long, then I'll pause the video. And I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> okay, while I had that phone call, I laid down some more sequins and I'm gonna start adhering them. Although I have to say, I'm not sure if I want this one here or not. No, it's too big. Okay, we're gonna start with that. Okay, so what I like to do is I take my jewel picker in my left hand because I'm right-handed, and that's what I'm gonna to use to pick up my sequins. And then I'm gonna have my glue in my right hand. Again, I'm right-handed, but I'm also going to hold, you know, I don't really wanna use the, I sometimes use Barely Arts glue for this, but I find it's a little easier, and I happen to prefer using on-point glue from Imagine. Um, it's a little easier for me to hold this bottle when I have the pokey tool. I just have to clean the nozzle out. Okay, I clean the nozzle, and so now I've got my jewel picker, my glue, and my pokey tool. And I'm gonna lift it up with the jewel picker, apply the glue, and then place it down with the pokey tool because sometimes it's tricky to get the sequins to release. And I know that sometimes people will kind of roll their jewel picker, whether it's this brand or a different brand, whatever. Um, they kind of roll it off, but that doesn't always work for me. And then sometimes the sequins moves and I just can't be bothered with that. So I find it easier to have the pokey tool in my hand with the adhesive, whichever brand you want to use is fine. And then I can just, kind of knock it off of the, the jewel picker. One more, whoop, there we go. How cute is this? That's adorable. I'm very happy with this. I hope that you like how it turned out. I think it's really fun. I love that it's super grungy, but it's also got traditional holiday colors. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Norma, I hope that you're watching this video and that you like the end result of this print. I'm certainly happy with it. Um, that's it for me today. I'll be back very soon with another video. I hope that you are getting ahead of all of your, your to-do lists for the holidays and whatnot. Um, and I guess that's it. Hopefully I'll be getting ahead soon too. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Be well, stay safe. Peace out.